where you can hear the, the love that these people have for their town. <laughs> We're here at the uh, Seneca Casino. It's right near Niagara Falls. You, if you look out the, the window here in the hotel, you want to come up here. And uh, you, especially, you want to come up here in a month so you get a good idea of what it's like to have just to hear the sound of one nut cracking. <laughs> but if you come here, you can look out the window of your hotel room, and all you see is, uh, you see like this mist coming. You can't see the falls, but you know, uh, you, you can uh, uh, get over there. And, and you can go into Buffalo, which is experiencing a rebirth because of and, well, that's what I fucking keep reading, okay? Who's ever doing your PR fucking is really setting things up, okay? That's what I've heard. I've heard it, trust me, I read shit, okay? Those for you who are listening, and this is, you're listening to The Rant Is Due, by the way. That's what we call this, because I couldn't come up with another name. But uh, the fact is, is that it, that's what I, is that true? The Buffalo's getting nicer? So, so the economy didn't work up here, I guess, huh? Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry things didn't work out. Fuck, it got better. God damn it. No, but it did. And it's, it's unbelievable that it would get better in a place that really is, it should be fucking just an ice factory. It's fucking unbelievable. It's really what they should produce here, just produce ice and send it to all of us, and we can have cubes every day. No, I've been up here a lot. I used to perform in Buffalo a whole lot at a comedy club there, and I've, I've, I've always enjoyed my time up here. And it, it really is, it's, a, it's, it's well worth coming up, in, in, especially in the summer, when it's fucking nice out! <laughs> and I also, just recently, I performed in Jamestown, New York, and, uh, and that, uh, which is the uh, ancestral home of Lucille Ball, and where uh, they'll sue... They're soon, they're soon building, and I'm involved with uh, helping them, which is really a, it's going to be, I'm, I'm really, a, you don't want, like, nobody really wants my help, but it's, um, but it's, uh, it, they're, they're building a national comedy center there, which is going to be quite astonishing. I can't believe I'm doing a fucking travelogue. Okay, but it's true, you should, I'm, I mean it. There's Chautauqua, which is, uh, you're going to want to come there. And Chautauqua is an extraordinary institution. Uh, it's, edu it's literally all about, it's all about thinking, okay? And I know during the summer, you want to say, fuck it. But one day, one day is not going to hurt you. Um, how old is your average, av average fan? Looks like 70 to me. I don't really, I don't really know. Um, I don't know, and I don't really give a shit. <laughs> My average fan, I have people, I have kids who come up to me who are 12 years old, uh, and, I've, and whose parents bring them to see me in order to destroy their child's mind. <laughs> and I have people come up to me who are in their 90s. I have a, I have a, I'm, I've been lucky enough through the course of my career to basically be a family comic. It's true. I am. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the, the fucking uncle who just swears and shit. Um, why are my balls so low? Why are my balls so low? Ask someone. And uh, I don't know and I don't want to know. I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. It's gravity. And then you tugging on them is not going to help. It's not like a little bolo thing and you can attach stuff with it. They're your balls, they're attached. Um, celebrity life. <laughs> Get a grip. That's a myth. Um, 
First off, I'm not a celebrity. On the celebrity list, I'm down here. No, I'm not. I'm down here. I mean that. I know where the fuck I am. You, you, get, a, uh, you get a real good sense of it. If you, there are people who were, when I did Inside Out, you get a real good, I, I did it. There were really major celebrities. And, um, you know, and that's, thank you. That gave me a chance to go to a younger audience and fuck with them too. <laughs> Nothing gives me no, more joy than to know that a three-year-old has an anger doll and me screaming at it all day. But I got a good sense of it, you know. Amy Poehler was in it, and uh, and she's she's here. I mean, they, they would basically, Amy would have to do a lot of the work. I mean, in a, in a lot of ways, it's great the amount of celebrity I have, because she would have to do six hours of interviews in a day, and I would do two, and that that you can't beat that. So you you kind of want to be a celebrity on that level. But 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 the, the problem with this it, the life that uh, that I have, if that, and it's not a problem. But it's it's just the way it is. Is that uh, um, you know you, we have we have dinner after a show. You know it's like oh boy you must they must no you sit on a bus a tour bus we're lucky enough to have that that's great. But you sit there, I have to sit there and watch John Bowman eat. Imagine what that's like. <laughs> it's horrifying. It's just horrifying. And then um, you, uh, <clears throat> but I'm in a. I've, I noticed this over the course of time. It's it's. Is things uh, I'm, I'm in a bubble. I live in a bubble, and that's and that's part of the problem that you that that, that we really uh, our politicians have. They live in a bubble. Donald Trump, for all you think is you know reached out to you, he lives in a bubble. He lives in a bigger bubble than I do, because he's got more. He's a celebrity and he's uh, and he bankrupted a casino, so his bubble is huge. <laughs> But I mean, I, it's true, I, I, I do, and I have to find ways to get out of that bubble. I wish that more of our politicians would find ways to get out of that bubble and begin to pay attention to fucking shit. But they don't. It's, it's, it's a good life, but it's a weird life. You know, it's like being in, a, in one of those suits that somebody, uh, you know, you just feel like, I get in a, I get in a, a, a car will, you know, a car will pick me up, a car will take me to the airport, um, I, I get on the plane, I get to sit in first class. Why? Because if I'm back there in coach, someone's gonna die! Okay? Someone is gonna fucking take it! I can't watch people bring shit onto a plane anymore. I can't fucking do it! And the, and the planes tr change the rules, so everybody's trying to drag fucking everything they fucking can get their hands on. I'm bringing my gold doubloons this week. <laughs> What's that? Well, that's my uh, helper animal. It's a marmoset. What the fuck is the matter with you? People are traveling. A woman was traveling. They showed me a picture. A woman has, has her fucking uh, assistant, whatever they call that fucking thing that they get a thing because it calms them down. Son of a bitch, she travels with a turkey. Yes, I saw it. I saw the turkey. Fucking, it took up the whole seat. It's lying there like that. Are you shitting me? And then I get off the plane. Then I get in the bus, and then we drive to the theater. And I... I get, you get to my hotel when I have the opportunity, I try to get out and travel around and, and see the cities I go in. There's a question here tonight about what, what parts of the United States do you like traveling to the most? I like them all. There's, it really is a remarkable country. And it really uh, doesn't get the leadership it deserves. It's insanely remarkable. It's extraordinary from beginning to end. Um, and, I mean, you, like, you know, Arizona, the people there are, 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 are traveling to a different drummer, but the landscape is, is stunning. Why? Because the sun is six inches from the earth. <laughs> it's 
your nuts just actually, your nuts cry. <laughs> they, they, they literally can't get far enough apart from each other <laughs> to try to breathe again. You can travel through, if you take the, uh, <coughs> it's the Colorado River, I think, that you take and go into Oregon and, uh, it, that way. It's, it's a fucking spectacular ride. Coming up from LA to San Francisco, fucking spectacular. All of these places. And what we don't really grasp, and which really probably is the only lesson I've had from doing the last 25, 30 years of traveling, is, you know, for all of this yelling and screaming and fucking nonsense that's going on, these, we, th the reason it's crazy at times is because each of these states are like a different fucking country. You know, we can talk about being Americans and the bond that we have all we want, okay? But we in New York are so much smarter than those fucks in Florida. <laughs> but it really is. Every place you go, the fucking, it is, it's amazing that we've, we've held on this long. And I believe that we will hold on through this. As soon as somebody, uh, we, God willing, will stand up and tell people that just because, uh, it, you know, the, the, the Donald Trump won the presidency does not mean uh, that somehow bigotry and racism have triumphed. The people who are running around, there has to be, adults have to start standing up and standing up really fucking quickly. Nobody's making this shit up. This shit's happening. And it's fucking, it's, it's fucking disgusting. And it's fucking wrong. It's, it's morally reprehensible. And it's gotta be stopped now. We came this far. You don't go back to, to 30 or 40 years to when I was a kid. You don't go back to that shit. You're upset about Muslims. You're upset about black people. You're upset about um, you're upset about Asians. You're upset about uh, Hispanics. You're upset about Jews. You're upset about Italians. Those Irish have always pissed me off. <laughs> you got a house. Sit in your house and yell about it, and you leave it there but you don't get to do it here. The country wasn't based on that. The country was, like it or fuck not, based on a melting pot. That's what it was based on. We all came from somewhere else. We all came from somewhere fucking else except the folks who run this casino. <laughs> and, we, and those of us who came here, um, you know, just because people are now coming who have a different color, that doesn't mean any, it doesn't make any fucking difference. That's the deal. That's the way it is. We're the great experiment. Don't fuck it up. That and all of them. I mean, all of them. That was really funny, Lou. Aren't you fucking funny? Um, period panties and how awesome they are. Okay. This is why I do this. <laughs> Are there panties women wear that, that when they have the period? Those like Mormon underwear? <laughs> what are period panties? Big and baggy. <laughs> they have like a, 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 a waist sight or something. Well, I'm period panties and how awesome they are. Well, 
Uh, go for it. I don't know. I won't. I wasn't wearing mine tonight. Oh yeah. Okay, how to address uh, uh, talk to Trump supporters among your family and loved ones during holiday get-togethers. <laughs> Without resorting to alcohol or firearms. You start by giving them either candy cane candy corn or brunch favorites candy corn. And just hand them to them and say, peace. I guarantee uh, chances are that this will basically stun them in a way. As opposed to bringing one of those stun guns, this is like you just go here. If I, if I were you and you had to be home for the holidays this time and, and you're going to be dealing with somebody who's a rabid supporter on either side, don't go. Don't. Don't fuck up your Thanksgiving. Don't fuck up your Christmas. Fuck that. And if they tell you, say, no, I've got it. I come down with, tell them you came down with the Zika virus. You tell them you came down with the Zika virus because the fucking Congress wouldn't vote the fucking money that was necessary for it. <laughs> Initially, that they waited. And now you're lying there and you're seeing lights and shit. And your brain is swelling and you don't know what to do. And you really love to be there, but. <laughs> you don't have to go home. Don't fucking do it. I stopped going home for Thanksgiving when I realized my mother couldn't fucking cook a turkey. I said, what am I going home? My mother once took a turkey. This is true. And, and she cooked the turkey, and they ate the turkey. And then she froze the turkey. And then I came there, and she took the turkey out and put the frozen turkey in the microwave. You know what happens then? It turns into shit. like a turkey that has like a muscle problem or something. <laughs> Don't go home. Send them gifts. Send them a pie or some shit. Why would you do it? Why the fuck would you do it? You just went through a year and a half of this shit. You need to subject yourself on a fucking... How many breaks do we get during a year? Not fucking enough. You're going to take your break and just flush it down the toilet. Don't be stupid. Fuck them. Fuck them. You need time. Both sides need time. Don't go. Don't go. I'll leave you with this. I've received one of these before. I believe it may be by the same person. But it's a terrific they wrote about the same subject. What I really do this for is in hopes of getting rants from people about things that normally I, I don't know about, like working in an office, you know, or having to, to deal with being on a bus every day with a whole bunch of people going to work, which I did for a while, way, way back. But I don't want to just make shit up. And I've found stuff along the way that's been extraordinary, such as this woman, you know, I'll, I'll, it, it, I'll, I'll start this by saying I love pickles. I love all pickles, every pickle. You can pickle fucking anything, and I will fucking eat that pickle. Why? Because my mother couldn't make a turkey. That's why. <laughs> Let's start by mentioning that this just happened at dinner right before coming to your show. Is she here? Did you send, did you, did you send the original one? Mm? But did you send the other one way back? Wow, fuck. There's a, you have a partner out there. I was reading it because I thought maybe it was you. I'm, no, that's amazing. The two of you, you have a movement. 
You may have a party. The way things are going, you may have a party in four years. The pickle party. It's nothing new, though, because it happens every time, every fucking time. Whenever I ask for no pickle, whether on the sandwich, on the plate, or what have you, you better believe every single time there's a fucking pickle ruining my food. No matter how much the service acknowledges my pickle hate, emphasizes their understanding of my request, that pickle is always fucking there, getting its liquidy pickle-flavored nastiness all over my food. The worst is when the bread is on the plate and the above-mentioned nasty juke seeps into the bread, making it not only disgusting, but fucking soggy, too. This is a real issue that we face as a nation. I hope President Trump makes it a top priority. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure spending time with you.